Hello everyone, welcome to CS for All. Today we are going to talk about theoretical analysis of bubble sort, binary search and merge sort. So without wasting any more time, let's roll the intro. Hi again. So first we will be talking about bubble sort algo. So there are two cases. One is the best case and another is the worst case. So best case will be when our algorithm will have to run the minimum number of iterations and worst case will be when the algorithm has to run the maximum number of iterations. So now we will be analyzing this code here. This is a bubble sort code and this is a modified version of the bubble sort. So basically we need to analyze this two for loops, the outer for loop and the inner for loop in order to predict the big O notation, right? Now I will go through the code once. So we have a Boolean variable called swapped. We have this outer for loop and this inner for loop. So suppose we have some elements here. So let's say one, two, three, four and five, right? So what is my inner loop doing? Let's see that. So inner loop is running from the first element to the second last element that is one to four here right and then it is checking if the first element that is a current index element is greater than the element in the next index again it will be checking for two if two is greater than three again it will be checking for three if three is greater than four again it will be checking for four that if four is greater than five so in all the cases none of the elements none of the current elements are greater than the element on the right hand side right so this inner if statement will not be executed. So if this inner if statement is not executed, the swapped Boolean variable which was false will remain false. It will never turn true. And when the compiler will come to this line, that is if swapped equals to false, then it will break. And what it will break? It will break this outer for loop. So what we can see, we can see that in the best case, when all the elements are already sorted, only the inner loop will run and this loop will run up to what? 1 to n minus 1, right? So this will loop will run up to n minus 1 and there will be n iterations only. So that concludes to we go of n code, right? My outer for loop is running only once. So that concludes to a big O of n solution in the best case. Now let's talk about the worst case complexity. So in the worst case, my array can be something like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That is they are not sorted. Okay. So now if I see the inner for loop and the outer for loop, I have to check how many times they are running. So let's say outer for loop is out and inner for loop is in. Okay. So when my value of i is 0, Okay, so how many times will this loop run? When my value of i is 0, this loop will run for n minus 1 times. So value of i was 0 and inner loop will run for n minus 1 times. When value of i is 1, inner loop will run for n minus 2 times. Similarly, when value of i is n minus 1, this inner loop will run for 1 time. So I can clearly say that the summation of all this works here, the summation of all this works here would be the total time complexity, right? So this will be equivalent to a summation of n. And as we have seen in the previous video, this conclude to something like n into n plus 1 by 2, right? And there will be some constant k because we are doing a constant work here and again a constant work here so that we can conclude to a k here. So this will be my big O of, you see there are two n's multiplication. So there would be big O of n square code. So in the worst case, when the array elements are not sorted, that will conclude to a big O of n square solution. Now we will be talking about binary search. So let's first see intuitively what is the algorithm of a binary search. So in binary search, you initially get an array, let's say of size, let's say of size n, okay? And you have a start, you have an end here, and you have a mid position here. 
So based on some logic, you eradicate either half of the array. So let's say we eradicate this half of the array. Now we are only left with the array of size n by 2. Okay. So this was a zeroth step and this is the first step. Okay. Now again in the second step, we do the same thing. We eradicate one half of the array of size n by 2. So that would become an array of size n by 4. Again, we will do this in the third step and the fourth step and finally we will reach a kth step and at that time this array, this array size will be n by 2 to the power k. Okay. Since you can see at the first it was 2 to the power 1, at the second it was 2 to the power 2 that is 4. So at kth step it would be 2 to the power k. Okay. So we will stop the binary search once the array size is only once. Okay. So I can say that I am reducing an array of size n to 1 in how many steps? In k steps. Right. I am reducing an array of size n to 1 in k steps and the array will finally have how many elements? It will have n by 2 to the power k elements which is equivalent to 1 right so i can say n is equal to 2 to the power k right now if i take a log on both the sides of the equation that will basically be k equals to log of n base 2 right so this means i have to run the algorithm k times that is log of n times so that basically concludes to a big o of log of n code right that's why the binary search is a log of n code and it actually grows very slowly with time as the video is getting long i will be talking about merge sort in the very next lecture so that's it for today's video if you really enjoyed the video and think that the video helped you in any possible way Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and share it with your friends. If you have any doubts or queries, you can directly reach out to us or comment down below. Join our telegram channel. So see you guys in the very next video. Till then, stay happy, stay healthy. Bye. It's my life. It's now or never. But I ain't gonna...